Chapter 19 Man, ever since he heard me call my mama's name, Herman E. Calloway had locked himself up in his room and wouldn't come out. Mr. Jimmy and Miss Thomas made me sit at the kitchen table whilst they knocked on his door and tried to talk him into opening it up. But the way they kept saying Herman, soft at first, then louder and louder, it sounded like he wasn't talking back. After the longest while, they decided to let the big baby have his own way and came back downstairs. They sat at the kitchen table with me. Miss Thomas looked at me and said, My, my, my. Mr. Jimmy said, Now look here, bud. He wiped his hand over his face. You sure your mama's name was Angela Janet? I said, Yes, sir. And the two of you both had the same last name. Her last name was Caldwell, too. She never said nothing about being no Calloway. I spelt it out for him. No, sir. Her name was Caldwell. C-A-L-D-W-E-L-L. -L. It seemed like he finally believed me. He said, Okay, okay, I hope you don't mind me asking, bud, but it's pretty important that we know how'd your mama pass and how long ago was it? Pass was just like gone. It was another one of those words grown folks use instead of dead. I said, I was six years old when it happened, sir. I don't know why. She was too sick to go to work for six days in a row. Then one morning, I went into her room, and she was dead. But, but she didn't suffer or nothing. It happened real quick. She didn't even have time to close her eyes. She didn't look like it hurt or nothing. Miss Thomas reached across the table and touched my arm. She said, I'm sure it didn't, bud. I'm sure it was very peaceful for her. Mr. Jimmy said, When she was living, bud, God rest her soul, what'd your mama look like? This was another strange question, but before I could answer, Miss Thomas said, James, what are you insinuating? I knew there was something familiar about this boy. I don't know how I missed it before, but look at Bud's eyes. You have to ask if this is Herman's grandchild? Mr. Jimmy said, Now hold on, Grace. I'm just trying to ask the questions I know Herman asked if he could. Ain't a thing wrong with being certain before we jump to any conclusions. Now, what'd she look like, son? I said, She was real pretty, sir. Mr. Jimmy said, I bet she was, bud. But that ain't what I meant. Was she short or tall? Was she slim or big-boned? I said, I don't know, sir. She was real pretty and real tall and kind of skinny like me, I guess. Miss Thomas said, James, Bud was six years old. Everyone on earth was real tall to him. I don't see the point in all this. I said, pardon me, ma'am. I know how I can show you what she looks like. I still got her picture. They just stared at me. I said, can I be excused? Miss Thomas said, Yes, son, hurry up and go get that picture. I busted up the stairs, but stopped like I hit a brick wall. I remembered how mad and crazy Herman E. Calloway looked when he yelled at me. I tippy-toed up the rest of the steps. Uh-oh, Herman E. Calloway's door was opened up a crack. I held my breath and tiptoed extra quiet and extra fast right into the little dead girl's room. And as soon as I did, whoop, zoop, sloop, my heart jumped down into my stomach. Herman E. Calloway was sitting on the little chair in front of the little mirror on the dressing table. His elbows were on the table and his face was covered by his hands. It sounded like he was having trouble breathing. Because every time he sucked in a bunch of air, he made a sound like... <laughs> and every time he blew air out, he made a sound like... <sighs> I didn't know what to do. I could tell Mr. C didn't know I was in the room with him, so I could probably just backward tiptoe and get out of there without anything happening. I rose up on my toes, took two baby steps back, and stopped. Shucks. I'd come up here to show Miss Thomas and Mr. Jimmy what my mama looked like. There wasn't nothing wrong with that. I wasn't doing nothing that meant I had to sneak out of this room on my tiptoes going backwards. I sucked in a mouthful of air and walked over to my bed. I picked up my sax case and set it on top of the bed. 
I pushed the two silver buttons to the side, and the two silver tongues jumped open and made those loud click-click sounds. Herman E. Calloway still didn't take his face out of his hands. He kept going, <laughs> I reached inside my sax case and took out the envelope with Mama's picture in it. I closed the two silver tongues again and could tell that Mr. C. wasn't paying me no mind at all. He kept his face in his hands. His head was rocking up and down real slow, sort of like he was checking to see how much it weighed. I put my sax case back next to the bed and was about to leave the room when I looked over at Herman E. Calloway's back. He still didn't know I was in the room with him. I looked in the little round mirror and still couldn't see his face, but I could see his hands a lot better. I could see six little trails of water coming out from where his fingers joined up with his hands. The three trails from each hand joined up together on his wrists and ran down his arms, puddling up on top of the dressing table. Shucks! Herman E. Calloway was bawling his eyes out. He was acting like me being his grandson was the worst news anyone could ever give you in your life. This was number 39 of Bud Caldwell's Rules and Things to Have a Funner Life and Make a Better Liar Out of Yourself. Rules and Things number 39. The older you get, the worse something has to be to make you cry. With babies, it's easy not to pay them no mind, because crying's just like talking for a baby. A baby's tears might mean, Hey, you just stuck a pin in my behind when you changed my diapers. Or their crying might be the way they picked out to say, Good morning, Mama. What are we going to do today? That makes it easy not to care too much about a baby's tears. When you get an old person crying, you got a whole nother story. When you got someone as old as Herman E. Calloway crying, you better look around, because you know you're square in the middle of one of those boiling tragedies. You can't help but feel sorry for him, even if he's been mean to you from the minute he first laid eyes on you, even if he's crying because he found out the two of you were kin. I walked over to Herman E. Calloway, and before I could think, my hand moved out toward his back. I waited for one of those spaces between the muzz and the huzz, then I touched him. His skin under his shirt was very, very warm. It took a second for Hermione e. Calloway to know someone was touching him. When he knew, I felt his skin jerk and twitch the same way a horse's does when a fly lands on it. He whipped his head around. When he saw it was me, he jerked away, took one more giant, huh, then stared. His mouth started moving like he was talking in a secret language that only dogs could hear. At last, real American words started coming out of his mouth. He said, Uh, I, how do, I'm, I'm so, look, buddy, I, I just, it's Bud, sir, not Buddy. He put his face back in his hands and broke down all over again. Man, it's a good thing the thug wasn't around, cause if he'd have heard the way Mr. C was weeping, no one would have wondered who the real waterworks Willie was. I put my hand back on Mr. C's shoulder and patted him and rubbed him a couple of times, then left the room. It felt a lot better going out frontwards instead of sneaking out backwards.